This was my second year doing the Hillsboro tour in the 356, but two things were different this time. One, I was rolling solo instead of having my brother as a navigator, and two, the starting location switched to downtown Burlingame, which is literally so close to where I live that I could have pushed my 356 to the staging area. I'll show you the cars, the people, the drive, and the epic car barn at our lunch venue. You won't want to miss this insane collection, but yeah, mostly I'll show you the cars because, well, I love cars. First though, what is the Hillsboro Tour? Well, it's kind of like the Pebble Beach Tour, which is held the day before the concourse show, um, but involves actually driving the cars rather than just parking them on a golf course. I really love the quote that says, cars are boring, it's what you do with them that makes them interesting. So the tour is the day before the Hillsboro Concourse de Elegance, which itself is a show that has been going on for 67 years and is supposedly the longest continually running concourse in the world. And for those of you not from the area, not from the San Francisco Bay Area, Hillsboro is a small upper class community about 15 minutes south of San Francisco, which borders on the towns of Burlingame and Millbrae. The tour itself is a approximately 65 mile drive through some nice twisty roads out to the coast and then back, and it always ends with an excellent lunch at a cool automotive venue. Usually, these are private car collections that the public rarely has access to. This year, the organizers managed to get a street and parking lot in downtown Burlingame closed off to start the tour. This was a big improvement over last year's location because this meant that more people randomly passing by who just happened to be in downtown Burlingame got sucked into the excitement of the cars. And I think that exposing non-car people to these types of positive, fun events will hopefully improve the public perceptions of cars as a hobby. Not every car on the tour is entered in the concourse the following day. I'm not gonna call out every car that was on the tour, but I will mention a few exceptional ones that caught my eye. First was a factory supplied Lotus Amira. US deliveries for these haven't started yet, so I was pretty surprised to see one pull up. But it certainly drew a lot of attention, and I've covered the Amira in other videos on my channel. The orange Lamborghini Gallardo was another really nice car. I think the Gallardos have aged really, really well, and in fact, I like them better now than when they originally came out. The morning staging area was catered by a restaurant called 12 Month, which supplied delicious pastries and coffees to get the participants fueled up for the drive. As we left the downtown staging area, it was super fun to have people lined up along the streets taking pictures and videos. It kind of reminded me of like an actual rally. It was also cool that the police had blocked off the intersections for us, allowing us to stay together as a group and just kind of blast through the red lights. I even saw a few of the officers giving thumbs ups and taking pictures, so it's nice to know that some of them are car enthusiasts too. Surprisingly, I was the only Porsche 356 on the tour this year. There was a Porsche 550 Spyder, I think it might have been a Beck replica, I'm not sure, which was beautiful, but that was probably the only thing that was closely related to my car. Another notable car was a Bugatti Chiron. This was driven by a younger guy who had an older gentleman as a passenger riding shotgun. Now, I think a basic Chiron is about $2.5 million, maybe a little bit more. So it was pretty cool to see it out being driven, though we were on some very tight and narrow roads, which may have been challenging in a car like this. Also, we barely broke 60 miles per hour on the drive, but then again, where are you really gonna use the 1500 horsepower that a Chiron has to offer? We finally got to the Portola Valley parking area and Dick DeLuna used his former Yellowstone tour bus to transport folks over to the Jalik Ranch for lunch. Now Dick actually hosted the tour lunch last year and I'll include a link to my video of his 
insane car collection. By the way, I wonder if folks on the bus knew who he was or just thought he was some random bus driver. Personally, my favorite part of the rant was that Phil had barrels of 110 octane fuel with little hand pumps to fill his race cars. That I thought was really cool. The car barn housed an impressive collection of cars. Those included one of Fernando Alonso's F1 cars, a rare 1951 356 Roadster, which is nothing like my 356 Roadster, and a Le Mans winning 1952 Oscar. In fact, there were at least two Oscar race cars, both beautifully restored. Anyway, that's it. Another great annual car event. I had an awesome time on the tour chatting with other enthusiasts, and I will definitely be back again next year. See you, dude. Have fun tomorrow. Take care. Yeah, yeah. enjoy the show tomorrow. We'll do enjoy the, the birthday. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be. Well, there probably won't be any cars there, but that's okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, All right. take, take it easy, man. Take it easy, guys. I'll tell my brother to look you up. You said your name is Steve, right? Yes. His name is Drew, and he's got an orange with black stripes, 2002. Right. I think it's a 74. I don't think I've ever seen the Audi's frunk. That's a good size. Uh, that's a good size. Pretty decent. Yeah. yeah, I've got a 911. And it's about the same size yeah, as that. 911 is bigger. A little Super bit bigger. Yeah. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Yeah. You said you had a 911 too, yeah, right? I do have great yeah. eyes. Which one you have? I have a 991.1 S. Mm -hmm.